nicely folded. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Joined today by Minnesota head coach Hugh McCutcheon, as well as student athletes Sarah Wilhite and Samantha Seliger Swenson. Uh, coach McCutcheon is in his fifth season. He's led the Gophers to the second straight Final Four appearance. Coach, uh, will you start us off with an opening statement? Uh, the Gophers are very happy to be here in Columbus and uh, excited for the tournament to begin and looking forward to a good match with Stanford. All right, we'll take questions for the student athletes at this time. We have a couple of mics floating around. If you raise your hand, uh, we'll get to you. And please state your name and affiliation uh, before asking the question. Start here on the middle left. Uh, this is for Sarah. Sarah, this is uh, Jeff Sheldon with the Omaha World Herald. You have three Big Ten teams made the Elite Eight. Two have made it to the Final Four. And is this is this the toughest go round through the Big Ten that you have seen in your four years at Minnesota? I would say so. Our Big Ten schedule this year was very difficult, especially like our last four games of the Big Ten were all against top ranked teams, and it was a good challenge for us and really prepared us well going into the tournament. Right. Rachel Blount, Minneapolis Star Tribune. For both of the players, just in your first few hours here in Columbus, does this feel different for the team than it did last year when everything was brand new to you? Samantha, you want to start? Yeah, I think it. we know what to expect coming in, you know, all the outside distractions and stuff like that besides volleyball. So it is a little bit more familiar since we were here last year. Here in the middle, right again. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Can you guys just talk about how different this team is than the team that lost to Stanford in three to one sets earlier in the season? Yeah, I think we've grown a lot throughout the year. I think against Stanford, the biggest thing that we've learned is just to be patient. And if you see your shot, you take it. But if you don't, like if there's a big double block in front of you, you can manage it and wait for the next one or wait for another opportunity. Um, that's been a huge growth of ours. And then also just in-game adjustments, being able to adjust to what the, team, the team's game plan that they have for us and kind of picking the lock and um, getting like scoring in ways that are different than normal. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, you're right. Here on the left. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm Lee Fine, so from volleyballmag.com. Can, can you guys tell me about the club team that you had that won the national championship and how all of you came to Minnesota? Samantha? Yeah, we did all play, or a lot of us played club together back in the day. Um, I think we all kind of had our own journey to Minnesota. It wasn't like a united decision. All of our paths just led here, and it's been great um, playing with some of these girls because I've known them since I was younger, and um, just seeing everyone evolve into the player they are today has been really cool. Packed among all of you, we're all going there together. <laughs> no, no, yeah, we all kind of had different ways of getting here, and it's just we just all ended up here, I guess. But I think the relationships that we had before college uh, have helped us. But I think the other players too, who weren't on that club team, we have just as strong of relationships with them, and um, we're just a united team across the board with both people on the bench, people on the court. We're all connected. To continue, like, so you said different paths. Like, Sam, what was yours? Like, who recruited you and what was the hook? Um, you know, I had some other schools recruit me and then hometown Minnesota. And Minnesota, who was, you know, bringing oh. you in? Because oh. Hugh wasn't here yet, was he? Uh, yeah, he was. I arrived in 12, and Sam, when did you come? 15, I think? Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, right. I was thinking, Sarah. Sarah, you're, you're the old lady. Sorry about that. How about your path? Well, how about your path? Sorry, I'll give this up in a second. But I'm just trying to. I I just kind of have a little interesting path. I was um, committed to Wisconsin for a while, and then I committed to the University of Minnesota in my senior year. So it was just different. I wasn't always going to come to Minnesota, but I'm happy to be here. All right. And well, one more question, if I can. Go ahead. Are Are you friends with? anybody on the other three teams who you're, either of you are close to or you know your teammates are? Other three teams? That are here. 
Oh. Um, I think people know each other from yeah. playing together for USA programs and stuff like that. Like, either personally, are you real close to anybody on those other teams? I'm personally not, but I have played against a lot of people, both in club volleyball and then also just being back here against teams that we've played before. And um, Nebraska's in the Big Ten, so we've played against them a lot. But personal relationships, not so many. Thanks, Sarah. Everyone here in the middle right. This question is for Sarah. In between the 2014 and 2015 seasons, this team took a pretty sharp turn. You went from being a non-tournament team to a Final Four team. Was there something between those seasons that really kicked in for this team? Was there some kind of a moment of clarity or something that, that just crystallized for you guys to make such a big leap from, from one year to the next? I'm not sure if it was a specific, like one specific thing. I just think we really worked so hard that following spring after the 2014 season leading into the 2015 season and it really built our chemistry as a team our um, unity and then also just I think we redefined what hard work is like on our team and then we were able to bring that into season another one here in the middle just a question for Sarah um, could you Talk about, all the teams have really good liberos. Could you talk about the frustration when you go up against uh, some of the better liberos in the game? Yeah, I think in the Big Ten and also leading up to this point in the NCAA tournament, the liberos have been spectacular. And sometimes you think you have your shot and you take it and they dig it kind of like it's nothing. Um, but that was what I was talking about before with the patience. Just when they dig your shot, you don't have to go back and swinging harder. Um, you can mix up just offensive range is huge. And so just using that as a tool when the liberos or the defense um, do defend your ball. Any more for the student athletes? All right, ladies, thank you. Free to go. We'll take questions for Coach McCutcheon at this time. Here we are on the left. I'm trying desperately to get a note out of that all that team of those kids. Get, were you cognizant of it at, at the time? And can you just tell me if, if all of them coming to Minnesota, what that's meant and if there's anything special there? And if it's a wasted note, tell me you and I'll just Yeah, it I, don't, I know that you want it to have some meaning, but I really don't think it does. They, they all got, got here different ways as they see it. And I, I, at no time did I think there was this uh, you know, secret pact that we would all meet up in uh, in Minneapolis. It, it, it's just um, as they see it, and I think this is this is the reality. It's great that they had their history, but the the way uh, our team operates and the culture of collegiate volleyball, the demands of collegiate volleyball are very different than those of club. Uh, so the the relationships are are there, but. You know, as Sarah said, you know, the, the, the whole team is connected. It, it's not just about that group. Um, there, there's no clicks. You know, there's just one click. That's, that's all 18 of them. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, no, it's not my click. I'm on the outs, man. Jeff Sheldon at the <laughs> Omaha World Herald again. Uh, Coach, Sarah used a phrase a couple minutes ago about being patient and, and being creative. I took it to me on offense called picking the lock. Yeah. Could you explain a little bit what that means and, and how do you train that? Uh, yeah, I think she's referring to the idea that different teams are going to try to defend you different ways. They're going to try to give you different looks or, or, or exploit weaknesses that they deem you have. And so... Uh, you know, both teams go into a match with a certain idea, a, a plan, per se, a, a, of how, how they want to attack or how they want to defend. But, you know, based on the way the opponent's doing things, maybe you've got to adjust. And so picking the lock is about seeing what's there and finding a way to win, even though it may not be the way you planned on doing it. Yeah. You know, right there. Yeah, Coach, uh, one question about the libero for you. Can you talk about... Uh, the growing importance it's had in the game. Uh, I think a lot of people think of it as a big hitters game. How important of it, you know, some coaches I've talked to said they pick setter and then libero second. How important is the position in your mind? Yeah, I think it's critical. You know, it's, uh, it's been a great addition to our sport, the idea of having a defensive specialist, but also, uh, you know, taking care of that first contact and serve receive. So yeah, we think it's a 
a very, very important part of the package. And, um, you know, it's uh, great to see uh, the, the standard of athletes that are playing that position and the, the level of skill that they can bring to that position um, increase year to year. And it's certainly, again, this year, a lot of great Libros. And we'll, we'll hope that trend continues. Another one here in the middle, Kelly. Coach, uh, Kellen Bicos, Columbus Dispatch. Uh, the players kind of talked about it a little bit, but can you just say how hard it is to get through the Big Ten and how the games kind of help you to prepare for moments like this? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I've been saying it a lot. The Big Ten was, was awesome in every sense of the word. I thought it was an, a very, very tough year in that conference. And, uh, and it's, it's a, a privilege to be a part of something that's so great, um, not just in terms of the level of competitive excellence, but just the crowds, the you know, the fan support, the facilities, the the Big Ten rivalries, the whole thing. It's it's um, a very special time in our sport in this conference, no question. So um, yeah, tough year, but uh, as you can see, um, you know, you're you're either battle weary or battle tested by the time you get to this point. And I think for a lot of us, we're battle tested. Everyone was ready to go, and Big Ten had another great year in the tournament. Another one here, front right. Hugh. Looking at your first few years as a head coach in NCAA women's competition, how have you evolved as a coach? And is the environment and atmosphere that you're trying to create here the same as what you used in USA Volleyball, or, or is it the college game different? That's an awfully deep question at this point, Rachel. I'll, I'll do my best to, to respond. Um, I think principally, uh, I wouldn't say there's been too much change. Um, but uh, I, I would say the application of those principles has changed, not just from, you know, coaching USA to coaching the Gophers, but even from year to year. You know, each team has different skills, different personalities, different strengths and weaknesses. And, and you know, I've, I've said often this job is not algorithmic. It's, it's um, really about fitting the, the system and the culture and the, you know, all, all the parts that go to becoming a high-functioning team, fitting that to the group that you have uh, versus somehow saying it's, uh, it's my way or the highway. You know, it's, um, I, I, I'd call it more of an adaptive, adaptive leadership than, uh, than an algorithmic one. Get on the left. Algorithmic? I'm not afraid to use the polysyllabics. <laughs> <laughs> Would you make an assessment of the Texas-Nebraska match for me, please? It should be a good one. You know, one of the unique things about this Final Four, I think, is just that each team's bringing a little bit different style. Um, so two very physical teams, uh, and it should be fun. A lot of fireworks there, a lot of heavy arms, a lot of scrappy defenders. It should be interesting. There you go. <laughs> Any more questions for Coach? Oh, yeah, no. At this point, Hugh, when you recruit, how much do you weight talent and how much do you weight character? Uh, we'd say they, they both matter a ton. You know, uh, we're fortunate in that uh, there's a lot of great volleyball athletes out there, but, but we know that, you know, better people make better gophers. So um, we care about their athletic ability and skill, no question, because you can't win the derby on a donkey. Right, you need some thoroughbreds, but you also need people that have some character and, and um, that can fit the culture that we're trying to create relative to being a good teammate and the, the hard work and discipline that it takes to become the best you can be. Good, awesome. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm here all night. Try the veal, man. Yeah. Coach, thank you. Good luck tomorrow. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. Minnesota's done with practice for today. We'll take on Stanford in our first semifinal tomorrow night.